Namaste. <laughs> I'm sitting here all blissed out because I'm starting to realize this new technology that I'm working on really works. I mean, I knew it worked already, okay? <laughs> I have a lot of experience with bhakti. But this level of bhakti is much, much more powerful because it's linked with jnana. So I want to give you a little <laughs> progress report. <laughs> My life just keeps getting better and better. I can't believe it. Today, the new equipment is going to arrive uh, so that I can demonstrate the mantras and bhajans that you'll need to know. And here's the really crazy thing. <laughs> I was thinking, how am I going to demonstrate these bhakti pujas and stuff uh, without a temple? All I have is a few pictures. As a sannyasi, that's even more than I should have, you know. But anyway, I was thinking, I'm going to have to establish a small shrine, a, a temple, you know, with, a, with an image, with a deity. And uh, so I was already making plans, how am I going to do that, and so on. And then today, this morning, <laughs> I go shopping, and I notice there's a little old broke-down temple on the corner in my village nearby. And uh, it's a wonderful place because the uh, village people bring their cows every morning and afternoon and sell milk. So it's, it's a marketplace of deshi milk nectar. <laughs> and uh, the lady who cooks my lunch gets her milk there and makes yogurt and sweets. And yesterday she made, um, what's that called? Not turmeric. Uh, anyway, <laughs> she made this wonderful sweet that just blew me away. From the fresh milk, like right from the cows. They even milk the cow right there, you know. It doesn't get any fresher. <laughs> so this little old broke down temple, I noticed all of a sudden was completely transformed. And there's a, a foundation and a new structure going up. And there's guys up on the, the, the Shilpa Shastris are up on the scaffolding, carving ornamental uh, figures on the temple dome and everything already. And it's like, what happened? Wait a minute. <laughs> so I asked my driver. My driver is my good old friend. And uh, he says, oh, they're building a temple to Ambal. I go, oh my God. It's like every wish that I have, uh, especially if it's completely unselfish, gets automatically satisfied by Maya herself. That's the power of this bhakti. Huh? And it's astonishing. It's more than astonishing. <laughs> it's blowing me away. So since I made this plan to benedict people uh, with the authentic karma yoga and bhakti yoga, things have just been blooming and blossoming in my life beyond description. But what can I say? <laughs> this is right. This is right. The reality itself, huh? the world, the maya itself, is really supporting me and helping me. That means that Shiva approves. So I'm going to go ahead with this plan. I'm going to, to donate the money that I was going to use to build a shrine myself. I'm going to donate to this temple project. And of course, that's going to give me tremendous access to the temple and I'll be able to use it for making videos and all that kind of stuff. We're negotiating now. So <laughs> I want to tell you, I'm going to be teaching stuff and you're going to be learning stuff, I hope, and putting it into practice in your life. But what am I doing? Am I a guru? No. Am I a teacher? Not really. 
I'm, I'm actually helping you to get rid of stuff, <laughs> your knowledge <laughs> and your false ideas and stuff. So I'm not teaching you anything. I'm helping you get rid of stuff you already learned. And what am I really? I'm your friend. I'm your friend and I'm sharing these things. I do not represent any particular line and certainly not any particular organization or any specific teaching. I'm free. That's my real nature. Shivo hum, shivo hum. I'm free and I can draw on all the different teachers and teachings and traditions and lineages and whatever, scriptures or anything. And I already demonstrated that on this channel um, abundantly by presenting many different teachings from many different teachers that I feel have merit and had some uh, value in my life. Like I said, I never present anything unless I have practiced it and experienced it myself. So I'm not blowing smoke here. I'm not, you know, two pages ahead in the book, <laughs> like some teachers. But I've gone through all this stuff and meditated on it and practiced it and realized it. That's why I'm telling you, okay? It's, this is back fence gossip from one friend to another. Oh, hey, I tried this new meditation. and Wow, it really worked, you know, <laughs> like that. Not that you should do this because this is the truth and everything else is wrong. That, that's idiotic, okay? That's why we have the Chatur Bar Darshanam, the four levels, right? Dvaita Vada, Vishishta Dvaita Vada, Vivarta Vada and Ajata Vada. That's why Shankaracharya gave those four levels, because Shankara himself taught mostly on the Vivarta Vada platform, but he also taught on the Vishishta Dvaita platform. And those teachings directly contradict each other. <laughs> In Vivarta Vada, he's telling you, get rid of Maya. Throw out Maya. <laughs> Don't identify with anything, any experience or perceptions. Huh? Just go deep, deep, deep into the, the perennial, changeless self. Pure awareness, not even consciousness. Pre-conscious awareness. Pure being. Ah. Yes, that's moksha, that's kaivalya, uh, that's full liberation. And then in his Vishishta Dvaita teachings like Bhaja Govinda and Saundarya Lahiri, he's teaching worship Maya. Huh? <laughs> Completely opposite. Why? Because the truth, as Kanchi. Mahaparyava taught. The truth is what a particular person needs to hear to benefit him. So don't try to bring logic and argument in here. Don't try to come up with, you know, oh, so-and-so said this, and this scripture said that, and you're wrong because you're saying something different. It's all bullshit. And I've said that here many times before. Even everything I say is all total bullshit. Okay? <laughs> you have to take these things and test them and see if they work for you. If it doesn't indicate to you, if the light doesn't go on in your head, and if you try the teaching and like nothing happens, you don't get any taste. Drop it. Huh? It's not for you. But if you hear something that I say or anybody else says, and it, it indicates to you, ah, this has value, and then you try it and you get a good result, by all means, go on with it. 
So the teachings of karma yoga are different from the teachings of bhakti yoga. And those are different from the teachings of raja yoga. <laughs> and all of those are different from jnana. Because in jnana there's no teaching at all. No activity whatsoever. So try to understand. Whatever level you are on, you have to take the instructions that are appropriate for you and leave everything else aside. Okay, that's why I gave that teaching of the Chatur Darshanam. So that you can assess yourself and see, oh, I'm on this level or I'm on that level or I'm, you know, trying, aspiring for this other level. So I should begin to learn those teachings. But for example, I've seen again and again, people want to jump up to Raja Yoga and do Buddhist meditations and stuff. But what happens? They just fall down. They fail <laughs> because they don't have the background. They don't have the foundation. So it takes a long, long time to build up to real meditation. It's not like you can just, you know, when you're 19 or 20 years old, just sit down and immediately realize everything. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Oh, this is a funny story. When I first came to Tiruvannamalai, like two years ago, it was right in the beginning of the season, about end of November, beginning of December. And I was sitting in a shop eating idli. Uh, and there were some other, some tourists, you know, the people who come and go. They were sitting nearby at, a, at another table, and one of them was talking. He said, oh, I used to be a, a Buddhist monk. I was a Buddhist monk for like three years. And the girl that he was chatting up asked him, well, what happened? You're not a monk anymore. No, I couldn't get anywhere with the meditations. So I disrobed, and I went back to school and became a doctor. And now I'm doing medical research, postgraduate uh, research and like that. And she says, oh, really? What are you researching? And he goes, Get, this, is, this is really... He goes, I'm testing the effects of meditation on chronic multiple sclerosis patients. <laughs> I just about spit my idli through my nose. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this guy, he became a Buddhist monk and he failed because of lack of background, lack of foundation. So now what's he doing? He's taking Buddhist meditations and applying it to some medical thing. This is like, this is like you have an intergalactic hyperspace cruiser. Okay, fully armed and fueled and ready to go. And what do you do with it? You take it down to the corner store to buy beer. <laughs> Duh. And this is going on. Huh? There are a lot of people who come here, come to Tiruvannamalai, to, have, to get a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a husband or a wife. Huh? What? <laughs> I mean, I suppose you can meet some nice people here, but that's not the point. This is not a place for social life. This is a place for meditation, heavy-duty sadhana. And if you misuse it, well, of course, you don't get the result. What to speak of, it's also offensive. So I see my life going very smoothly and I'm making attainment after attainment after attainment. But now I'm like seeing other people just stuck. So I have to do something. I have to do something out of compassion. And that's why I'm doing this new series. And so I hope that you're going to stick around and enjoy it. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Harihi Aum.